Hello again, everybody. Uh, after the opening keynotes uh, and a coffee break, it seems like it's already been a pretty full day. Uh, but now we're just going to get to the true heart of the discussion. Uh, I'm honored to uh, uh, be welcoming to the stage uh, a lot of knowledge and talent and, of course, to be allowed to moderate this discussion. Uh, and we're going to talk about how we're shaping the future. Now, this was a theme that was touched on in our morning pre-coffee session, but about what are the things that we can do, what are some of the issues driving the future of the U.S.-Poland uh, economic and business relationship. And some of that is about how we address current problems and how we uh, avoid them in the future and, and move forward. But we do have a lot of positive trends, and, and I hope the discussion will focus on how we uh, keep those going and uh, negate uh, the negative ones. So we're going to cover a very uh, large amount of ground in a very short period of time, and then we'll get you fed. Um, I would like to uh, introduce the, the panel, and I'd like them to come up uh, so you see who is speaking. Um, and uh, I think there will be something on the screen that will also educate you uh, as to who they are. So uh, first, I would uh, uh, be very pleased to welcome to the stage the Assistant Secretary for Global Markets at the United States Department of Commerce, Aaron Walsh. Oops. Wherever you're, wherever you're happy. We're also pleased uh, to welcome the Undersecretary of State at the Ministry of Entrepreneurship and Technology, uh, a face that we have met with uh, more than a few times and always happy to see again and continue the discussion, Tadeusz Koszczynski. Uh, another familiar face, uh, and one that's just back from some travel, so hopefully brings us some new and fresh insight of the future, is the president of the Polish Agency for Trade and Investment, Tomasz Pasula. Uh, also joining us uh, this morning uh, from Discovery, EMEA, the president and managing director, Kasia Kiley. Kasia, where did you go? Here? Ah, here she is. Yeah, you can start down there. So welcome. Uh, also joining us, the general manager for Poland, Baltics, and the Ukraine uh, from Emerson Automation, uh, Tomasz Koszyk. Now we get to the alphabets. Uh, CVC Capital Partners. Uh, uh, we are proud to welcome uh, Krzysztof Kravczyk. Uh, joining us uh, from Microsoft, small company some of you may have heard of, uh, is the general manager, uh, Mark Lofgren. Mark? Welcome. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, uh, uh, from Emmetel, member of the supervisory board, uh, Przemysław Kraczewski. So my expectation is everyone's going to say a lot of smart things, and moderating this is going to be extremely easy. Uh, so I'm counting on you. Secretary Walsh, if I might uh, start with you, you have a wide role. You're responsible for global markets. You're also uh, overseeing the uh, uh, commercial and foreign uh, service um, within the Department of Commerce. So what do you see, you know, based on your uh, long experience you have, of course, at State and Commerce, but also uh, in your current role as the key things that you and your team can do uh, uh, to help us drive this relationship forward? So thanks so much. Uh, we have an amazing team that's based here in Poland and led by Charlie and our ambassador is a huge support and I think together with them and the teams we have an interested group who's very focused on the relationship, the economic relationship, the security relationship and the people to people relationship. With our team what we've done this year is we've actually built, our focus is really um, determining core sectors. So while the commercial service in the past has been um, really supportive of people around the globe, every single business that comes in, we've decided that with our, we have 
105 offices overseas and we have 100 offices in the U.S. What we'd like to do is to utilize those offices in the U.S. to uh, drive sectors which are the most important for Poland. So uh, Charlie and his team uh, did a whole country strategy saying where the key opportunities are in the next 24 months in Poland and we've matched those up with the opportunities in the United States so there's a push and pull. So it's no longer kind of random, it's core sectors that have opportunities are being supported in the U.S. and in Poland. So it's a whole cycle of success which I think will help build our relationship because Poland is moving really quickly and we want to be able to provide opportunity. Same way with the foreign direct investment and the investment coming from Poland into the United States. We do the same thing. Super, thank you. Uh, Minister Kosciuszki, so you know, we've been talking about the strong and, and growing economic relationship. Um, what are, if you could pick two, possibly three, of the government's priorities right now, again, as, as uh, Secretary Walsh mentioned, to, to drive the relationship forward, what are three things that the Polish government can do uh, to help us and Polish companies uh, drive this? Okay, uh, I think the, the first thing is that uh, the Polish administration uh, has to learn to listen to the market. And that's uh, one of our top priorities, is to make sure that we listen to the market, that we understand that we're for the markets, uh, uh, not the market is for us. I think that's probably the first thing. The second thing uh, we're doing is uh, uh, moving the economy away from what we call uh, imitation economy, so competing with our partners uh, on price, uh, uh, doing the same as someone else is doing, but just uh, doing it cheaper at lower margins. We're moving the economy to innovation. I think this will uh, help the, uh, the, 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 the American companies in Poland and help Polish companies uh, get into the States because we'll now be competing on innovation in global markets, which uh, I, I think uh, we, we can be uh, uh, there in the very front in a global fight there. Uh, and the, th the third thing is, because the Polish con economy is growing, we're helping to grow the economy. It's, it's, it's uh, uh, had a tremendous record and continues to, uh, I think, for the civil future, that looks, uh, the future looks bright for Polish economy. Um, but disposable income will grow, so Polish consumers will move away from looking at price, which benefits more Asian type of uh, uh, pr pr products, into uh, looking at uh, quality of, of what they're buying, which will probably move towards the North America market. Super, thank you. Um, I think you know that is an ongoing discussions we're having as as Poland moves up the the, the value chain, the quality chain, and in, in across so many sectors that only makes uh, Poland more competitive, but it also changes the strategies and the ideas that, that policymakers need to bring uh, to the mix. Um, turning uh, not only to another direction, but also uh, uh, to my right, but also to uh, uh, to the business side. Uh, Discovery is making a major investment in Poland right now, uh, Kasia. So uh, tell us how it is that Poland is becoming you know, such a, a important market globally for the company and why Poland now? Well, I, I think that, that we really need to start from the beginning because we are low, but we were among those companies that have been investing actually in Poland for a very long time now. Uh, we launched our first channel in 1996. Uh, so it's been, uh, it's been a while. We opened the office in, uh, in the year 2000. And I talk about that uh, because I think it's, it's, it's really important uh, because what's important in true partnerships and in, uh, in having a dialogue and in having a, a real relationship is the length, predictability of that relationship and uh, dialogue and uh, you know, fair treatment and, uh, and just openness, frankly, and friendly business environment. And this is why we made this investment year on year, year on year. Just to give you a history, you now when we opened the office, it was me and two other people in one room. Next year, there were 10 of us. Two years after, there were 50 of us. And today, we're among one of the biggest investors in Poland. So this is something that was really, really important because that creates history, that creates trust, and that's why we are succeeding. Obviously, the scale of the market, the talent, and uh, the possibility and the hungriness for content, high-quality content, innovation, plays also a big role in it. But I think this, this long history is very, and, and the predictability is very important. Well, I think you, you raise an, a point about the, the, the long-term growth. I mean, one of the things we're always happy to point out with all the stakeholders in the market is that over 50% of the U.S. investment every year comes from existing investors. 
So we love to see new projects, we love to see new companies enter the market, but it's also vital to remember that, that companies, whether it's a Discovery or a Coca-Cola or an Avon or somebody, they, they, you know, they started rather modestly and now have built uh, operations that not only are big in Poland, but indeed have regional and European-wide uh, uh, impact uh, on the company. Um, but speaking of impact, speaking of Europe, uh, I think we have a traveler just back, one of the travelers just back from Hanover Messe. I'd like to ask uh, President uh, Pesua that you know, we've, we hear the message about why Poland. What more uh, do you see that the, your agency can do uh, in terms of following along the lines of Minister Kosciuszewski, listening to the market, listening to people, uh, uh, and, and you know, how is your agency evolving to better help, not just American investors, but you know, all investors to, to understand how quickly the Polish market is changing, because the Polish market of today is not the Polish market of two years ago, in terms of opportunities, technology, and, and, and what have you. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, what we do, actually, is uh, we are trying to uh, to take advantage of the situation where Polish companies are actually mature and, 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 and rich enough to, uh, to think of servicing American market and then uh, and, and, and think of servicing the, the Canadian market through the US and think of servicing uh, Mexican market through, uh, through, through the US. So um, what we're doing right now is uh, we actually are assisting companies in um, either setting up their uh, uh, operation centers in states or, uh, or even production facilities. I hope that uh, in a couple of months we'll, we'll have a, a big announcement together but uh, uh, this is this is a big turn in let's say in uh, in economic relations between the U.S. and and Poland. On one hand, the American companies are no longer coming here just to service the Polish market and kind of take advantage of uh, of, of, of Polish consumers, but rather to produce here and service the rest of the EU. And uh, likewise, we have Polish companies that are finally um, uh, strong enough. Uh, to, to put up a good fight and then uh, and, and, and take advantage of, of the local American market and then through the U.S. Uh, throughout, uh, throughout the whole, whole region. So um, I, I greatly envy U.S. commercial service and, uh, and the number of the offices and, 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 uh, of, and the uh, assistance you provide to American, uh, American uh, businessmen. We are, let's say, uh, we, are trying to, we are trying to catch up. Uh, we are trying to catch up. We are establishing offices at this moment. Uh, Polish entrepreneurs have about 40 of them scattered around the, uh, around the world. Um, uh, we have an office in LA. We have an office in, in San Francisco. We have an office in Texas. We have an office in DC. We will open up one or two offices up, uh, up on, the, uh, on the East Coast. Uh, and um, I think there's a bright future ahead of us. Uh, uh, I was told by uh, I was told by, uh, by by U.S. diplomats that let's say the trade wars will not affect Poland, so uh, uh, we keep your word on that. Thank you. Well, we hope you're right that uh, any uh, trade issues uh, will uh, leave us out of the leave us out of the firing line. Uh, Thomas, at Emerson, you, you work in technology in the advanced automation space, and that's become an incredibly important role in Poland, uh, and and in. I've heard from many people one of Poland's comparative advantages is the way that it's modernized, it's, it's advanced manufacturing. Um, but can you tell us, you know, what is, role does that play in making Poland competitive as well as how useful is it as Poland to demonstrate the U.S. developed technology here in manufacturing? Uh, thanks, Tony. That's a very, uh, very good question. Um, in automation, uh, in the industrial world uh, where I come from, you know, competitiveness is all about producing more for less and, and safely. You know, and automation can enable that. Um, we are designing automation solutions uh, based on uh, such innovative uh, technologies like presented here, virtual reality or additive manufacturing, Internet of Things. You know, it's all uh, it's all part of digital transformation that, that we are undergoing, and uh, those solutions are uh, helping our customers to. Uh, um, uh, to be more efficient, to, uh, to use less energy, uh, and to be more, more, more productive. Um, and, you know, uh, companies, top performing companies that are using uh, latest technologies, you know, for example, in, in, uh, for, for predictive um, strategies for, uh, for reliability, can have half of the maintenance costs of, of their uh, worst performing peers. You know, and that's, 
that's a direct link to bottom line and that's competitiveness. Uh, you know, it's, it's also about, about human, you know, 25 years ago we started, uh, we decided to create a strong engineering, uh, engineering uh, center for the region in, in Warsaw and that paid back because, you know, uh, Poland generates uh, very smart engineers and also uh, Polish companies demand state-of-the-art technologies and, and, and demand, uh, and they are competitive, so, uh, so we grew a lot from, from, from that, you know, and, and we are able to, to implement a lot of U.S. technologies. And, and about demonstration for U.S. technologies, you know, um, half of the electricity generated in that country is with use of our automation. So I guess that's the, that's the showcase of U.S. technologies, isn't it? Super, thank you. Uh, before we make you all get tennis neck and look down to the other way, because uh, but I wanted to keep on with the, the idea about the uh, 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 innovation, efficiency, uh, uh, and, and Mark asked you that, you know, we've probably all of us once or twice have used a Microsoft product. Um, but, you know, again, even in, in, the, in the, your business, the world's changing very fast. And we, you know, we have things like cloud and AI, and, and then there's the cyber threat, et cetera. So what's, what's driving Microsoft in, in Poland and in this part of the world? I mean, what are your key issues and, and how do you address them here? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly this is a, an incredibly exciting time to be in, in Poland. And in the industry I'm in, really exciting. You just mentioned some, some of those words. There's hardly a moment goes by without someone talking about data, artificial intelligence, um, security, internet of things, and how you can use those to get great business outcomes. And um, it's, it's a digital revolution. We had the industrial revolution um, some while ago, and now we're in this digital revolution. And our job as an organization is to work with small, medium, large companies, startups, organizations, different parts of the government to help them make the most of that to help them get the outcomes from that. We've got some world-class global platforms um, that are already usable and scalable. That innovation is open to everyone. And then some very specific algorithms that you can just plug into and use and make sure that you can already get the, the global advantages of AI. This global computing is like one click away. And I think the challenge and opportunity for all of us is to make sure we make the best use of it because the, the, the playing field is now level. You go back like 10 years ago and scientists or people within a company, they might have moved to somewhere that had these big on-prem internal computing resources. Well, now you can get it from a student's bedroom or straight from your office. And that gives a fantastic opportunity here in Poland for us to compete. We've got fantastic engineering resources. You just talked about that earlier on. Someone presented and talked about the in-depth um, computing knowledge. And then this entrepreneurial spirit that runs through the blood in this country. And I think when you pull all those together, it's, a, it's just a fantastic opportunity. So for us, it's how we work with the organizations to build their own Polish intellectual property on top of that, and then either go compete in Europe and around the world, or make sure that they can deliver what they're meant to be delivering here to their Polish customers or the, or the organizations, and then how we can help startups be uh, as super successful as they possibly can. So I'd say a big change in the last four or five years to how Microsoft is as a company. And the biggest thing for me now is we don't celebrate any more technology for technology's sake. We celebrate how people use that technology, what they create with it, what an organization or a, or a government or a startup can do with it for themselves. And that's when we really celebrate. And that's the, the change that you've seen in us. And it's just great to be part of this uh, event and this economy. Well, I think this is one of the things that we have to get used to in this uh, new environment that, that we live in that's very fast changing. One of the lessons I was taught uh, many years ago by a, a very smart gentleman, uh, he told me, uh, and I remember it and have repeated it as my own many times, uh, that innovation is just a word until you apply it to people and communities. Otherwise, it's just a word or a neat lab experiment. And, and I think that now the, the time between 
the innovation happening intellectually and being applied to market is that time is compressing and that presents challenges for all of us. You know, whether it's in the fact that nobody knew that we'd be living in the world of video on demand and, you know, I'm listening to insane things coming out of the back seat of my car. My boys are watching streaming video on their phones, you know, where I can remember when we got a VCR player, I thought it was pretty cool uh, when I was a kid. So, uh, you know, the, the, the pace of change is, is, is dramatic. But one of the things that enables the change and enables this connectivity to take place and us to take advantage of it as individuals, as companies, as societies, is comes back to infrastructure and the ability to communicate, the ability to share, the ability to, to interlink. And uh, Pshemek, uh from Emetel, um, I'd like to ask you, you know, how important uh, do you see U.S. investment in infrastructure you know, here in Poland, and, and what do you think would enable more such investment like Emetel to, to improve connectivity and, and the ability to you know, share big data, et cetera? Uh, hello, thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to concentrate on the future a little bit because the, the, there, were, there was a lot of information provided today about U.S. investment in the past. And I think uh, um, from my own perspective, I came back to Poland in 1997, that the Poland has accomplished an incredible success in building infrastructure in general. But in many ways, I, I think that um, um, the, the low-hanging fruit success type of uh, investments were almost completed. And Poland is moving to the next stage. We, we need to be uh, more complex, more sophisticated in what we're doing in the future in order to catch up with US uh, or exceed US, because I think we should uh, not limit ourselves in any way. Um, infrastructure in Poland, which will be needed, and the funds that can be provided by US uh, infrastructure funds, and this is uh, the type of, of a fund I'm representing, can provide um, funding for um, systems of national security, of firefighting, flood controls, uh, forest controls, we call it uh, uh, smart forest, smart cities, all of these things which will help to manage the, comp uh, the, the company, manage the country in a more efficient uh, way to, to provide more benefits to the country and its citizens. All of this can be provided, of course, in addition to services provided to the population on a commercial basis, because that's something which uh, most of us think about on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, providing internet. But that's something that um, is being done um, more or less on a regular basis today. We need to start thinking about Poland as moving to the next stage, more complex infrastructure, more involved infrastructure. And uh, um, American funds, uh, such as Alinda, for example, who invests in airports, gas pipes, uh, railroads, can provide so-called, I call it, patient money. Uh, this is money which doesn't require uh, an immediate return. It's uh, uh, looking uh, into a long-term cooperation with the country that uh, it invests in and uh, looks to growth with the country. That's, that's one of the opportunities that comes from America. Thank you, Pshemek. Well, thinking about somebody has to pay for all this infrastructure and all these new things to happen, um, uh, I think one of the things that gets missed in the argument sometimes is that there's an enormous role that funds play uh, because they're not always the name that you recognize. They're not always the name that's on the investment project. And, and there's a flow back through, through a lot of different layers of, of decisions and investing, uh, which are critically important to funding these long-term major projects. I'd like to ask uh, Krzysztof, you know, uh, as, you know, like Emetel, CVC's invested among other things in infrastructure. You know, funds are a key factor. You know, what do you see uh, as the role now, but also going forward for the investment funds, uh, you know, in the U.S., which are not necessarily on the front line, but are indeed the source of a major amount of the capital that comes in? Uh, indeed, actually, uh, the inv private equity uh, industry in Poland has been created by U.S. Uh, about 25 years ago, uh, U.S. Congress has released certain funds that uh, uh, set up the first uh, Polish-American enterprise fund. So, you know, these funds play, play a massive role over the last 25 years in transforming the, uh, the economy. We, we actually, you know, keep seeing each other at these, at these panels because I think... Uh, you know, it is our role relentlessly to, to build dialogue and educate about how 
the investor community thinks and works. Uh, uh, and first of all, we have to bear in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that investment funds are made, created for profit. They raise money from institutional investors. Uh, you know, we, uh, well, our LPs, our investors are you know, fi firemen, fire people from state of New York or uh, uh, teachers from, from California, and they expect that the investment funds will uh, <clears throat> create return on this capital in order to pay their, their pensions. So we are here to create returns for uh, our investors. But in exchange, the investment funds leave better, stronger, uh, healthier uh, businesses, uh, which are staying here and uh, are creating wealth of, uh, of this nation. Uh, there are three major ways that uh, capital can add value. It's not just patient capital, as Przemek said. It can also be smart capital. Uh, First of all, investment funds uh, focus a lot on strategy. And money is nothing without knowledge. And uh, investment funds, especially uh, from US, bring global perspective to uh, local companies and, and give this knowledge to, to local managers in order to build you know, better, stronger uh, businesses. Secondly, you know, we, we keep talking about technology. Uh, which is essential in, in today's uh, economy, uh, which is undergoing a massive tr transformation, not, not just uh, here in Poland, but, uh, but globally. Uh, you know, we organize uh, so-called digital tracks for our portfolio companies. So even today, one of our C-level executives is in Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, through our relationships, we're able to open doors to uh, you know, our colleagues from uh, from venture funds uh, to present the, you know, the, the latest uh, technology, the brightest uh, uh, managers in the uh, uh, US tech sector in order to bring this technology here uh, and to deploy it here. Uh, and, and finally, uh, you know, private equity community, investment uh, funds prime, you know, pride themselves of being you know, very high in terms of uh, so-called so ESG. So, uh, uh, you know, the, the standards of responsibility for the businesses that, uh, that we own. Uh, and through that, uh, you know, Polish businesses are actually much better than their peers in, in other countries because of uh, environmental, social and governance standards that we bring uh, to uh, our portfolio companies. So there is much you know, beyond the, the capital that uh, the funds can bring uh, to, to Poland. Well, thank you. I think that's one of the discussions I've had in New York, Washington, other places too, about how a market reputation flows back through many different layers, uh, and even to the point where specific markets uh, can be discussed by an investment committee of a state pension fund to determine whether we want to put money into this country or that country in terms of tagging and putting restrictions on funds. So I think this is something that is also important to communicate that there's a lot of stakeholders and decision makers in terms of unleashing this money and that we should you know, be mindful of that. Um, President Pessoa, I'd like to come back to you though and, and as we talk about technology, we talk about, you hear the word convergence about a lot of things. Um, how do you, uh, discuss with potential investors this this convergence because Poland is a good place to invest but this convergence of Poland not only being a good destination but also a great base of operations a great base for uh, uh, human capital and expanding uh, uh, it seems to me that some of the traditional lines that I can recall reading in brochures from the old pies are kind of blurred now because the the world is not quite so stove piped in, in, in things. So how do you meet that, that challenge and, and, and present Poland as a uh, uh, blend of right price, right people, right technology, right <coughs> access to markets? Is that, is that a challenge or are people, investors still looking for a real single simple solution? To be honest, uh, I think that um, I'm actually riding on uh, um, uh, riding on a horse that someone else has uh, looked after for, for many years. Um, it's actually that uh, the economy is, is, is well. Uh, we are one of the last reservoirs of, uh, uh, of human capital. Uh, then certainly there is a uh, there is a present uh, uh, tech uh, tech and, 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 and 
let's say, uh, there is a certain inclination of Polish workforce to be very tech sa savvy and uh, uh, to actually have mathematical skills that are needed for uh, for different uh, different IT services. But I guess most, much of that had happened just by itself. I mean, it's it's we haven't really. I mean, we've been reinventing our uh, education system for so many years, and uh, and uh, it's it's not. Uh, Let's say it wasn't for many years until now a conscious effort, for example, to, to teach children mathematics. And uh, it, seems, uh, it seems to us that this is one of the selling points, uh, one of the selling points right now. Uh, so actually I'm coming, as you said, I'm coming, from, coming back from Hanover, Mess. So I, I came back through, through Middle East, actually, so it wasn't a direct, <laughs> direct flight. But uh, <clears throat> the thing is that uh, we actually produce goods of, let's say, Western European quality. Uh, that are easily sold um, either I within German market or through German market elsewhere. Sometimes even they are being marketed as being made in Germany. And, uh, and, and then we produce them as a, at about one third or one fourth of the cost. And this is the basic selling line. And, uh, and, and, and despite, I mean, anything that can happen and, uh, and, and, and sometimes political turmoils and, uh, and what have you, you have businessmen that are coming and the, they are saying your economy is going through the roof. This is one of the last places where I can actually obtain uh, labor force uh, inside Europe. And this is one of the last places where, let's say, labor force uh, behaves responsibly. And uh, apparently, I mean, uh, I wasn't really aware of that until I started looking at Poland through, uh, through foreigners' eyes. But uh, apparently, German, uh, German industry, for example, is praising, uh, is, is praising Polish labor force for work ethics. And they say this is something that's, uh, um, uh, that's long gone in Germany, for example. And this is, I mean, I've, I've been hearing those stories from, uh, from, from the representatives of, of, of German businesses. I, I, I met some, uh, some of the defense and IT companies uh, during a recent, uh, recent trip to Indiana. And uh, they told me that Poland, uh, Poland is the only, let's say, talent pool outside of India in terms of IT and then let's say anything that, um, that requires complex mathematics. But they say it's easier to, 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 it's easier to, uh, to talk to you guys and, uh, and, and, and there's a certain business ethics that, uh, that we share. So um, all in all, I mean, uh, it's easy to, 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 to take, um, um, uh, take credit for something uh, I wasn't responsible for, but it's not, what I want to say, it's not difficult to sell Poland right now. Well, uh, we all wish we could be in that in our business as well, saying, ah, oh, just buy some of this, sure. You Take want two. my job? Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, I'll keep mine for now, but uh, uh, I'll let you know I'll if anything will. changes. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, Kasia, uh, if, if I could turn back to you and, and ask you, you know, looking at, uh, you know, we're hearing a lot of positive things, but what are some of the optimal things that could happen in the market or that you would like to see happen in the market, you know, to further enhance not only the value of Discovery's uh, 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 you know, investments, but really to fully develop and take advantage of all the talent and all the, the, the opportunities that this market, not only for Poland, but indeed Central Europe, could, can offer the company. Well, I, 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 I think that, you know, first thing to say that, you know, we're extremely excited about having TVN join Discovery and having now the, you know, this, this type of a, of a media and scale and partner in, in Poland. However, we also have to understand that um, TVN is joining a truly global media company. This is something that has not really happened before. We are a company that operates across 220 markets with roughly six channels in every single market. And that creates a lot of opportunities. And uh, frankly, when, when you think about that, you know, I don't see, you know, to your point, we evaluate investment <laughs> and I run a big region um, uh, and I evaluate investment where we're going to invest in content, where we're going to invest in digital content on, well, maybe not daily basis, but often. <laughs> I don't see why uh, Poland could not become a real hub for original content or for digital content creation. You could see the apps that we already develop here for discovery purposes, for global use. So it's, uh, it's not just a Polish use. So I think that that's, that's absolutely possible. But to the point that, you know, we were again, and I will talk about probably just repeat again, stability, predictability, uh, and, uh, and transparency is very, very important when we make those decisions. So I think that that's, that's the most important thing. 
Well, you know, one of the reasons, as we talked about in the opening comments here, you know, to have this summit periodically, I think, is to not only continue our regular dialogue, but be able to take that step back and, and kind of assess and, and recalibrate, and particularly to underscore that, that open communication between the investment community and governments on both sides uh, uh, of the ocean is absolutely critical uh, if we're going to be satisfied, uh, both on the private sector and, and, and the public sector. Um, Secretary Walsh, um, I don't know if you saw while you were traveling, but we had some good news that uh, Lot Polish Airlines has decided to order some more Boeing Dreamliners. Um, so we're, we're pleased. Well, I'm not sure how that does the trade numbers, but uh, 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 we're still very pleased about that. Um, uh, but we also, I wondered if you could just expand a little bit more because I, I have gathered from talking to a few people throughout the country here, um, asking whether or not we have an ulterior motive as the Americans to Charlie's secret government program of Select USA. Um, but, but I think that, uh, 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 I was just wondering if you could kind of address that, you know, the, the strategy behind that, but also, um, you know, how does in today's political environment in the US, how does that, uh, uh, how does that resonate, you know, with policymakers in Washington? Because, you know, I think most of us know that, that trade and investment drives jobs uh, uh, and wealth and, and, and prosperity, but I think in many markets around the world, there are certain voices that are calling some of that into question, even if it's not based on sound uh, uh, fundaments. So I think you know. So what is the the, the torchlight guiding message from 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 commerce on on the the need for issues uh, and programs like Select USA, but as well as the value that 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 fair and and, and free trade bring. I now is not a be, now is the best time actually, as President Trump said at Davos, to invest in America. And I think uh, he and the administration have really put those words into action. So it's not just messaging uh, which we're giving; it's actual action. In fact, this past spring they passed the for the first time the largest tax uh, reform in the in the last 30 years, which was really very very pro business. And that is really one of the most important issues when you're looking at investing in America is tax and regulation. The other thing, the other focus is uh, lowering the regulations. It would take business before up to 10 years with all the multiple regulations that have been put in place to regulate business. And so the Trump administration is trying to lower that to two years. Now it's going to take a, a little while, of course, to do that, but that's the core thing. The other thing is obviously we've got a, a very strong educated uh, workforce and we have a lot of flexibility in the uh, capital that we have in the United States. So I think now is a great time to invest in America. I think all the governors are really prepared for that kind of investment in businesses as well. However, we're looking for good investment and honest investment from, that's the difference between open to all investment to open in good investment. Well, that's the only type of investment we have here in Poland, is good, uh, uh, honest, and open investment. Um, we have to, we have to th rethink our strategy to its U.S. now. <laughs> but, uh, and if, Mark, if I might come back to you um, uh, and, and ask a question that, that is on you know, everyone's mind, uh, I think, going forward, and how you see it from y your space in the, in the, in the technology sector. You know, how do you see the do you see workforce as a challenge for you going forward here over the next few years or is that still uh you know a horizon event that's a few years out but but you know as you has probably heard the government is actively addressing some of the issues and thinking about how we make sure we have the right skilled workforce in place to keep growing in these high value added technology and 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 science related areas do you see any indications that that's a challenge now or is this something you're just monitoring for the future I think certainly it's a, it's, it's a challenge. I mean, I, I get not just from my role, I get to be in a lot of CEO round tables, hear a lot of different businesses from different industries talk, and, and certainly um, labor force and access to the to labor force and skilled labor force is, is, is becoming more prevalent in those, those conversations. I mean, there is a fantastically great skilled labor force here, but of course then, 
there's, there's two competitive drivers happening. One, the companies within Poland who are wanting them for their Polish businesses, which is great. And then the opportunity, because people are very mobile in and around Europe and elsewhere, um, for people to move. So I think that's why all of us need to make sure we invest um, heavily in, in training and opportunities to bring those standards forward. I think, as Tomek said, the education system has been superb in giving us um, a great grounding in people. For instance, as, as it happened yesterday, and it's still running today, in the Expo Center, um, we ran a, a big event to train people for coding um, and to really understand our, a mixture of our technologies, but generally the opportunities within the digitalization that's going on. We had two and a half thousand people registered they all turned up. I mean, honestly, we could have run several thousand more being in there. When we do that again, we're going to have to think of the size and scale. You know, such is, such is the, the demand and such is the opportunity for, for people. I think on top of that, there is such an opportunity at this moment. If you think the last 15 years and privatization put Poland in a very good place in the manufacturing industries, like a, like a hub for manufacturing, if you look more recently, there's this idea of a, a Polish cloud valley. And I think that can become far more than, a, than an easy to trip off phrase. I think that could be really true. And I think if we put our minds around that, you see so many more um, Polish businesses, small and medium size, delivering services all over Europe, but bringing that money and, and that wealth back to Poland and then investing in training people. And I, and I think there's a lot of opportunity there with startups as well. We're seeing more and more startups start to be successful outside of Poland. But again, it's going to make sure that we've got to keep on the training and the training's up to date and, uh, and, and then the digital economy here will, will thrive. So, Przemek, uh are we set infrastructure-wise to handle this new economy? all this video on demand. Uh, uh, I guess some of that could also, from Kasha, do we have enough cable? Do we have enough towers? Do we have enough you know, capacity to truly you know, take advantage of it? Uh, because you know, bottlenecks kill. No, no, we, we do not yet, but we can. Uh, this, this is doable. Um, I really believe that because I actually spent last 10 years in Amitel doing that and um, in telecoms close to 20 years. Um, in investment of this type, you really need to think really, really long term in how the technology is going to change in order to reflect in your investments the growth which is going to take place in beyond the horizon, in fact. Because my personal story, when I joined CPSA, the legacy telecom operator in 2002, I, I'm a lawyer by education, so um, I talked to engineers and they told me, for example, that uh, in wireless uh, technologies you cannot exceed 10 megabits per second. Uh, that's just physically not possible. And I believed them uh, for about a year and a half. And then, uh, then the next story was 25 megabits. I believed them for six months. And then I stopped asking questions. So the, 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 the question, uh, will we be able to deliver 8K, which is being considered for Olympics? Uh, not everywhere in Poland today, in a lot of places in Poland today. Will we be able to deliver 8K uh, everywhere in Poland in 10, 15 years? Maybe. Of course, in 10, 15 years, we'll be probably doing 64K or something else, else K. Uh, but it's all doable. And I think Poland has cap uh, capacity to do that, uh, know how to do it as well, through American and Polish companies, plenty of those. Um, so yes, the answer is long-term yes, maybe not today. Krzysztof, what is the key to crafting the type of project and package that will make uh, these enormous pools of capital turn the money loose to do these extensive long-term infrastructure you know, projects which essentially become the glue of the new or newish economy? Well, something that uh, any investment committee uh, starts conversation when deciding on allocation of capital is, is country's reputation and country's fundamentals. And Poland uh, for years had uh, an absolutely you know, superb uh, grades stating the obvious, but the uh, you know, country is absolutely famous of uh, very driven, hardworking people that are really uh, you know, destined to succeed. Uh, 
what is absolutely required is, as Kasha said, you know, predictability, stability, because that allows these funds to grow in value, but also build the infrastructure, build, build better uh, businesses. Uh, in, in the environment of a change, and uh, you know, let's, let's face it and let's be frank, you know, Poland has been undergoing uh, changes over the last few years. What is important is that we maintain dialogue about these changes, because that's what the investment committee is taking into account, is the regulator willing to sp speak to those that are regulated? Is the regulator taking a bigger picture, and is the regulator setting fair play, and is only used to regulate businesses and not do anything beyond that? You know, these are you know, very critical elements of investment decisions that are sometimes missed, uh, but you know, they, they are absolutely key in order to you know, unleash this uh, tide of capital uh, into a country. Well, well, hopefully, you know, as they say, from your lips to God's ears, uh, that that is uh, uh, what people will do. Um, uh, Tomek, uh, as we're listening to, to talk about innovation and change and whether we deliver 8K or, or not, uh, I wanted to just come back to you real quick, because we also hear thing, terms like smart factories, factory 4.0, another term I had to look up, actually, somebody mentioned to me, it kept saying in a conference call, RAE. Does anyone know what RAE means? I didn't. Apparently it means rapid automation evolution, a term for how by the time you plan to modernize your production facility, what you're going to buy is already a generation old and about how you best adapt to this change. You know, what, what are the implications you know, for, for, for Poland uh, in terms of, uh, because our population is not going to grow that much. Um, you know, we do, there will be eventually demographic challenges, et cetera. You know, how do you see, how can automation and efficiency help Poland stay competitive? I guess I'm in a good place right now and a good time if we are talking about automation. Automation used to work in the shadow and, and, and quietly do, do, do its work, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, we all speak about digital and about changes and, and, and you know, digital content, digital you know, stuff, uh, uh, digital workforce. You know, digital transformation is happening as we, as we speak here, you know, and, and uh, uh, that's a global trend, that, that's the same trend for US, the same trend for, for, for Poland. And um, um, recently I was talking to, to executive of one of the um, refineries middle of Poland, um, and uh, you know, classical industry, old stuff, and, and he told me, I have a dream, I have a dream that my technology speaks to me. That's, that's, that's the rapid automation, um, whatever the, the term is, you know, and actually that's uh, that what, 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 what is happening all around us and that has big impact on, on competitiveness of, uh, of economy. You know, uh, era of um, efficiency, meaning leadership by cutting cost is, is gone in my opinion and companies need to rethink business models, uh, how to do stuff differently. Um, like we are delivering, uh, um, for example, trainings on digital twins of, of technology, of, of power plant, you know, you need to, uh, the market uh, requires different skill set of, of, of a workforce right now, different jobs are, are being created and we need to think how to, uh, how to provide that services, that those infrastructure to, uh, to companies. Automation in the past helped to get uh, proficient efficiency gains, but now it will uh, it will uh, help a lot in, in that digital transformation. You know, automation will never replace human being. Automation will enhance human human being and will allow to uh, uh, to serve um, new new tasks. Just Im imagine, you know. Uh, sending a service a technician or service engineer into, into a dangerous place. It's better to equip the person with virtual reality and have all the checks, diagnostic uh, done remotely um, in almost feel like environment. So um, digital transformation again is happening. It will impact workforce. It will impact how we do business and uh, it will create uh, um, new layers of 
of, of values. That's that's what it is. Uh, the, the term there is a new term, renaissance of manufacturing. I guess that, that's that's related with digital. Super. Thank you, um, Minister Kostinski. To sum up, what message should this crowd take away uh, uh, about Poland and your you know, hopes and aspirations uh, for what we can accomplish in the U.S.-Poland relationship over the next five, ten years that are on real-term deliverable horizons, uh, because certainly we have uh, ever-increasing defense and security cooperation and, and cooperation and defense modernization, more R&D, uh, more advanced manufacturing, um, but what would be your message to take away so that people keep making those types of decisions going forward? Okay, I think, uh, first of all, we all know about the obvious revolution that we had in uh, moving from a century planned economy to a free market economy. I think now less obvious is the revolution of moving from an imitation-based economy to an innovation-based economy. And another revolution which is uh, beginning to happen, which we can already, already see on the figures, uh, where, uh, trade figures with the states, is Polish companies beginning to start to export because they've been very inwardly focused over the last 25 years. The companies that do export, they tend to export to the EU, uh, uh, and 80% uh, of our exports go to the EU. Now we're looking together with, with Pay to facilitate uh, exports to the Far East, to, 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 to Africa, and to, North, to, to America, North and South. Um, we'll be competing in the digital market, I think, uh, and uh, we're very well prepared for that. We have a tremendous skill set. 10% uh, of the uh, students in Europe are, uh, are in Poland. Uh, very well educated in mathematics, engineering, innovation, um, and so, so uh, fighting in this new uh, uh, global market of, uh, of digitalization, I think we're very well placed. So uh, I think Poland, uh, we'll, we'll hear a lot more about Poland uh, uh, on, the, on the global market in, the, in this high tech field. Well, we, we certainly hope so, and uh, I think though that hopefully the discussions here today, the opportunity to meet with Secretary Walsh and, and, and build that relationship further uh, uh, will contribute to continued success. So ladies and gentlemen, I will close this panel for now. You've